Welcome everyone. Thank you for coming to secure your data with HP GreenLake, Wizzerto and Scality. To kickstart today's sessions, let's welcome Mr. Yogesh, Worldwide GTM Lead for Security, Risk and Compliance, to speak about succeeding in data security. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to touch upon the data security uh, concept today in this session. And on top of this, how HP address the data security uh, uh, what is the approach and methodology which HP follows uh, to address the data security? I am going to cover that in this session. But feel free to to ask the questions um, on, in the into the chat box, and I will try to answer all the all as soon as possible. So, if you look at the the overall modern IT security governance, it is more or less is the different functional block which we are having. Just give me a moment. <laughs> So uh, there are there are two things. One is the risk identification as well as the risk mitigation. Risk identification is the more or less is the key for, for everybody to understand. And that's why enterprises focus on more and more risk identification and how we can mitigate the risk by, by having the different controls uh, uh, deployment. Traditionally, the enterprises are actually focusing on the, uh, the P3 model, which is which is people, process, and technology. And if you look at the technology layer, if you expect the technology layer for, further, it is actually having a different type of the risk mitigating controls, which we can have on a technology layer, uh, be it on a cyber resiliency, zero trust, defense in depth, as well as the holistic security. However, HP actually having the extended P5 model, which I will cover also in, in one of the slides today, which is uh, the combination of people, process, policy, product, and proof. And why it is needed? Because the people, process, and technology triangulation is not uh, something which is which is covering the holistic data security model. If you look at the security landscape from the enterprise uh, perspective, um, be it a network security, or be it any kind of the parameter security which customer deploy, at the end, the, the protection towards data is the key because for customer, Data is the valuable asset and uh, whatever security control customer put across, it is more or less is to secure the data because the data itself is the key for customer to survive into the near future. Uh, and that's why we are always saying that the data is a new currency, data is an oil. Why? Because whatever, whatever can be compromised, but customer cannot compromise the data alone. And that's why the the customer is more focused on the data security. So all the security layers which customer put across is to protect their data. And that's why the risk identification and risk mitigation is much more important for that. But when you talk about the overall IT security governance, the top layer is always governance, risk and compliance, which uh, we as an HV focus on that, how to govern the whole thing, what are the different kind of risk mitigation, risk uh, controls, which we are putting. and. At the end, customer need to comply, be it on an internal uh, policies and procedures. Customer need to comply on in different industry standards as well as the frameworks. And customer also need to comply on to the regulatory requirements which customer may have. So in that, and that's why it is the holistic view, the overall governance model uh, gets established with the GRC framework. Uh, the traditional P3 model, which is people, process, and technology, been extended from the HP point of view into the people process policy products and proof. And definitely the respective risk mitigation controls, uh, which we actually put across as a part of the overall data security and data protection. Now look at the entire life cycle. Before moving into the actual protection for data security, the first and foremost is know your data. And at times, whenever we actually have an uh, interaction with the customer, um, the classification of the critical data or a business, a business essential data is something which is very crucial and customer always have a challenge in terms of knowing their data which needs to be protected. A, we cannot protect the, the entire data because that is not needed. And that is the overburden of the overall data security um, uh, standpoint. B, we need to actually protect only that critical data, which is more in, more important for us to have the survival. And that's why whenever there is a data recovery requirement, then if the critical data is safe, if the critical data is protected, 
then uh, the customer uh, should not have any issue on that. So that's why the know your data is the first life cycle component which we actually help uh, to identify, which is more for data classification. And that data classification is more important. And then what is the different kind of protection which we need to do? So after knowing that, yes, these all are the business critical data, these all are the business essential data, now how we can protect that data is something which is the next layer. The protection is diff totally different based on the data type, based on the different kind of SLAs which customer needs for the data and different type of transactions happening. So pretty, pretty much we are actually talking uh, three components, which is data in risk, data in motion, and data in transit. So protection against these three layers, which is when data is at risk, then what type of the different kind of protection required for the data. When data is in trans transit, what type of different kind of uh, protection required for that data. And at last, data in motion. So that is how, how we actually do the, do the protection. Now, despite of the uh, protection, there is a there is a possibility of the data loss and that's why it comes to the third building block of that overall functional governance model is the prevent the data loss. So, so before preventing, we should have the detective mechanism and uh, without detection, we cannot have the, the, the prevention. So that's why it starts from the, from the detection of any of the uh, such kind of loss. You may have deployed a different kind of DLP or whatnot, but the product alone cannot give the right outcome. It is more of the approach which makes the whole lot of sense uh, in terms of uh, protection. So that's why when we have the prevent data loss is a third building block where we identify where all the data leakage points, especially when, when the different kind of um, heterogeneous environment or different kind of um, solutions which enterprises deploy the the integration point where the data leakage happened, and then we actually uh, uh, look at that aspect as well. The last is the govern your data. The data keep on increasing. There is a rapid growth every year, year on year, which customers have. Now, how much data need to be retained? How much data need to be delete? Uh, what is the delete process? What is the overall disposal of that data or that asset is something which we always look at that. What are the different kind of records customer need to have? Uh, so. Even when we talk about the storage because of the compliance requirement, if there is a retention policy defined, how we can actually store it is also the key aspect as a part of govern your data. So pretty much the life cycle, life, life cycle cover um, four uh, different functional blocks. Know your data as a starting point. Then the, there, are, there is a different type of protection requirement for that data, uh, uh, which is a business critical data. Then how to prevent the data loss and then the govern your data is something is the is the life cycle which hp follows on this now when you go further down um, there are two further uh, uh, differentiation into that which is the information governance and information protection now information governance how hp approach into that way that in terms of the data retention and record management uh, how we actually comply to the different compliance requirement that is more goes to the information governance. However, the information protection goes to the different kind of controls, be it the encryption uh, specific controls, be it a different kind of access rights. Even when you talk about the zero trust, how we can deploy the zero trust to, to protect that information is something is a key. What are the different um, data loss prevention techniques which we need to use? And we need to use. And then when you talk about the key encryption, the key encryption again gives a very um, uh, different way to protect the data. So how the key encryption works. So we actually further break down the overall information governance into information government governance plus the information protection. So that is how we actually help customer to, to uh, have the entire data lifecycle management along with the security as an integral part of the whole value chain. Now, HP is having a standard enterprise security reference model, which we call as ESRM. Now look at, uh, I talked about the, the new extended P5 model HP follows, which is on the left side of the slide, which is people process policy, products and proof. Now people process is something which probably everybody understand when it's a policy in terms of the data security policy, how we actually deploy this, those policies, and then the actual execution of that, 
the product talk about the different kind of product suits which is required uh, uh, to, to have that kind of risk management control. And proof is nothing but is validation and verification at every single point in time. So it is not something that every six months, somebody or someone will do the audit and then the, the verification and validation happen. It is more of an automated way or a real-time way to, to validate what we design, what we plan, what all the different controls we deployed and how it is having the implementation or deployment for that and whether that is that require any kind of improvement or not. So that's why the left side focus more on a real-time um, compliance way which includes a P5 model. Look at the different seven domains which we address uh, as a part of holistic end-to-end -end security reference model. It starts from risk compliance and continuity, the cyber design, uh, cyber defense and security operation, the secure application, secure infrastructure, physical security, identity and access management is the key for every single layer. And then the, the, the biggest tower, if you look at which is the vertical tower cut across all those domains is data security and protection. And that's why if you look at, because when you talk about risk compliance and continuity, data exists. When you talk about cyber defense and cyber uh, and security operations, the data security is always uh, part and parcel of the whole thing. Whenever we do something, the data processing happen and that's why data security and protection is the key uh, center around the entire framework which 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 I'm showing here, which is a seven domain um, uh, reference model which we we use uh, to adopt. Now, if you further go down, so seven domain is the high level domain. However, when you further go down into the subdomain, the seven domains actually have uh, 47 subdomains. Sorry, seven domains uh, actually have 47 subdomains, and then there are different capabilities exist into the each subdomain area. So. Um, just to share that there are close to 738 capabilities inside that 47 subdomain. So that means that we translate the high level domain requirement, which can be the compliance requirement, which can be the standard requirement, which can be the industry best practice requirement and whatnot. We translate into the more of an execution level or a tactical level into the subdomain. And at the control level, we actually have the capability in terms of if suppose we need to comply to any of the subdomain, then what all the different capabilities which customer or enterprises should have. That actually translate to the real execution and then we map that yes, these many domains are compliant because the domains can only be complied when there is a respective subdomain uh, get complied and then the subdomain can only be complied when all those capabilities and controls uh, will be into the compliance mode. So that is how we actually have the uh, you can call it as the top-down approach, which is from the seven domain model, or maybe a bottom-up approach, which is a capability-based uh, uh, compliance requirement for that. So it's a, it can be a right mix, which we are have. Customer definitely have some of the controls exist. However, if it is not adequate in nature, if it is not effective in nature, then we can actually have how it actually um, give the holistic view uh, in terms of the control requirement. Moving on, we offer the HP Rapid Security Assessment. That is the complete cybersecurity program, um, uh, which gives the entire, um, you can say, as holistic assessment um, to, to address the different kind of cyber attacks. And uh, successfully, we delivered uh, this to many uh, customers in the past. Even uh, there are in-flight projects are going on. The Rapid Security Assessment actually give uh, complete overall picture for a customer in terms of where they are into the maturity scale. Now, why we call it as a maturity scale? Because whatever we deploy today in security, we cannot say that, well, we actually define the controls, however, it is enough, and then we will long lost for next three to five years or 10 years, it is not possible. Security is a continuous in evolvement and then uh, they're based on the different risk assessment, um, based on the different um, risk um, uh, identified, we need to have the different risk mitigation control. Today's risk mitigation control may be applicable for next few quarters, may not be applicable, we don't know, because the entire cyber attack uh, landscape is changing every day. So that's why the security requirement for that is also changing. I uh, uh, also need to be uh, a continual program rather, or continual improvement rather than a one-time um, 
uh, assessment or a one-time build. Now, in this case, that's why we actually have the, the complete maturity model. And with this rapid security assessment, we actually uh, have the maturity model defined and we can actually see where we are improving and what all the different maturity uh, controls which can go further to enhance the overall security posture. The assessment uh, methodology is more or less is the direct assessment which we do and it is the uh, remote assessment which we do. Uh, we deliver this service remotely. So at times customer want a quick outcome, uh, such kind of uh, uh, rapid security assessment uh, actually help customer to have the quick view of their overall security landscape. Now, uh, when we talk about the methodology, we actually look at the, the actual LRC requirement, which is legal, regulatory, and contractual requirement, which customer ha may have. We translate that business requirement to the actual technological requirement, not only from the technological requirement, but it actually fits into the P5 model, which I um, described uh, in the in the earlier slides, and then with that uh, we actually say what all the existing capabilities uh, or competencies which you already have and what is needed. We actually have the the recommendation on that. That not only the recommendation, we actually help customer to to say that how customer can actually address those um, gaps uh, as a part of overall assessment, and then what is the high. Um, what is a short term long term and a mid term planning for for that so some of the some of the uh, gaps can be easily filled in with the with the some of the uh, different kind of uh, uh, existing control enhancement or the fine tuning of something so so it's more of a it's more of giving a short term mid term and a long term uh, plan to to mitigate that that um, mature to 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 achieve to that uh, um, maturity level uh, we follow the standard-based approach. There are the different uh, standards integrated to that. And that standard, we call it as a unified compliance framework. So suppose you may need to comply for PCI, you may need to comply for ISO or other regulatory uh, requirement. Um, and then the, even the CIS top 18, we actually have that also included. So our unified compliance framework in, have the integration of all those uh, different kind of industry standards and then we can actually say that you know this is what the control you should have which can further comply to multiple um, uh, requirements of your multiple compliance requirement for you so hp quick rapid security assessment is something which is uh, which is the starting point for for us to look at uh, the maturity level and how we can actually go further from there now this is what the overall assessment uh, uh, model which we are having we actually have the workshops where the uh, right stakeholders including your cx leadership including your it team including your hr finance and all sort of respective uh, stakeholders be part of that we actually have the two type of assessment done. One is a technology-based assessment where some of the tools and technologies used to, to assess your overall data security. However, the people and process is we are having a complete um, uh, framework where uh, respective stakeholders actually uh, give their feedback and inputs and then we actually put that into the framework and that actually gives the overall rating. Even for the risk, we are having a uh, technology risk assessment separate and then the overall uh, risk assessment which covers your business risk as well as the financial risk covered as part of overall risk management so so that is also covered as a part of overall methodology which we follow uh, and that actually gives you the complete capability maturity model into the p5 um, uh, all the p5 functional uh, domains and that gives the business outcome to you as a systematic assessment uh, in terms of what you need to do uh, when you talk about the data security and protection. So it is a combination of the the overall framework, the ESRM framework, as well as the, the tools and technology assessment, which we actually uh, provide uh, to, to cover the holistic end-to-end -end data security uh, model. So with that, this is what the crisp, um, uh, you can say, point of view which I shared uh, how HP addresses the data security need for a, for a customer and then how HP help them not only for the current requirement but for all their future transformation journey.
as a part of holistic uh, security framework model. With that, I will pass on the, the floor for any questions or to Trish back. Thank you, Mr. Yogesh, for setting the stage. Next, we have David HPE Zerto, Director of Pre-Sale System Engineering, to speak about Zerto for ransomware and how we can defeat the risk of ransomware and recover in minutes and in scale. Mr. David is based in US, so he is not able to join us physically in CIC. However, we have recorded his presentations and let's watch it together. Hello, my name is David Aldrich, and I am Director of Pre-Sales Engineering with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. I'm here to talk to you today about Zerto for Ransomware Recovery. So when we talk to our customers, there are three top challenges we encounter when speaking with them. One, ransomware, and that's really the main focus of what we're here to talk about today. As you can see in this slide, it's estimated that $265 billion will be affected by ransomware by the year 2031. Another top challenge that our customers are experiencing is unplanned or planned disruptions. Now it's said that there are 62.9% of organizations who have suffered some sort of disruption. And thirdly, it's cloud complexity. By the year 2025, there will be 100 zettabytes of cloud data. So really it equates down to the need for 24 by seven, no downtime and no data loss. Now by 2031, the fastest growing type of cybercrime is expected to attack a business, a consumer or a device every two seconds. Now that total cost, as we saw on the last slide, is gonna to equate to around $265 billion. Ransomware has become a board level challenge. Now beyond that cost of recovery, if we look at it, $1.85 million is the average cost of ransomware recovery. It takes roughly 21 days um, of the average disruption period of attack. Now, 66% of those victims suffered significant revenue loss. And 25% of those victims suffered a period of business closure. So it's really the question of, it's not a matter of if, but when. So why Zerto? And we're here again to talk about the effects of ransomware against your organization. And if we look at some key Zerto differentiators, one, we're talking about resuming operations at scale in minutes. Number two, recover to a state seconds before an attack. And number three, de-risk your recovery with instant non-disruptive testing. So when we talk about Zerto's near synchronous replication, again, there is no production to impact, no scheduling, no snapshots, or no agents that run on your guest VMs. And again, we're hardware and storage agnostic. And the one thing that's always great is always on, always protected. It's a software only deployment, agnostic to your storage environment that protects on-premises to the cloud or both simultaneously. And if we move a little bit further, when we talk about granular point in time recovery with the Zerto journal, and this is really what makes Zerto um, a differentiator from other competitors in the market. Now, if we look at the slide to the right, were hit with a disaster, a ransomware infection at 10 a.m. The disaster hits. Now with Zerto, since we have our journal-based protection and we're recovering and snapping checkpoints every five seconds, it gives you that ability to rewind within those seconds. Now, if we move a little bit further and we look at legacy, 
right? You may be taking a snapshot, you know, maybe it's done at the hardware level on your storage array every four hours. Now that equates to four hours of data loss. And if we go even one step further, we talk about a traditional backup, which is done every 24 hours, once a day, that equates up to 24 hours of data loss. Now with Zerto, you have the fastest RPOs, and we talked about those seconds, those RTOs of minutes. This is gonna allow you to really neutralize those ransomware threats. And if we look at app-centric recovery with our right order fidelity across the entire multi-VM application stack, and that's a really important one. We look at some of the applications, SQL, SAP, Oracle, Meditech, you can go on and on talking about those applications. We're doing right order fidelity across the entire application stack, which means no staggered backup windows. So when it comes to recovery, the entire application, it's done at the same point in time with no broken recovery. So applications are recovered as a single entity. Then we talk about orchestration, automation, and analytics. Easy interoperability with your existing tech stack. Non-disrupted testing. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few moments with ready-made compliance reporting. So no matter what compliance you and what regulatory needs you need to meet, you'll have those reported. And the ability to protect and mobilize at scale over thousands of VMs and petabytes of data. Again, giving you full multi-site visibility and predictive analytics. Now, when we look at a couple pain points, we talked about unplanned downtime. Now, on average, it's 21 days to a period of an attack with an estimated cost of $250,000 per hour. That is significant when we talk about the impact to a business or the impact to your brand. Data loss, pain point number two. Legacy backup brings inherent data loss. And we looked at that when we took a look at the journal. Remember those traditional backup windows that are done periodically once a day, which can lead to lengthy, lengthy data loss in your environment. Pain point number three, testing is disruptive. Most organizations test yearly. Large administration overhead, and challenges with testing, post ransomware attack. And that's an important one that we'll focus on as we take a little bit further look down the road. So one, resuming operations at scale, easy recovery of sites, applications, virtual machines, and files with our inherent journaling technology. Again, we talked about application-centric recovery with what we consider uh, to be the best of breed with virtual production groups. A three-click failover with scale-out architecture. Now, if we look at an example of recovery time, so recovering in minutes, two seconds just before an attack, one of our customers, Tenkade, two weeks before Zerto, that's the amount of time they spent in recovering. After post Zerto, it took them less than 10 minutes to recover. So you can see in this example, before Zerto, two weeks. After Zerto, under 10 minutes to recover from an attack. Recovering to a state or seconds before an attack, with our always-on replication, remember we talked about those RPOs of seconds. We create checkpoints every five seconds, as you can see in the example here, with our journaling-based technology, which gives you that application consistency across your entire environment, across your entire application stack. So again, if we look at Tenkadi, 
their data loss before Zerto was 10 hours. Post Zerto was 10 seconds. So now we're talking about an RTO recovery time, an RPO recovery time of seconds and minutes to really mitigate the risk when uh, being affected by ransomware. And if we look at simplicity at scale, proven reliability, and the gold standard in performance, and you can see below some of the customers who are utilizing Zerto, United Airlines, protecting well over 4,000 virtual machines with an eight second RPO. Fortune 10 organization, 1,200 VMs, nine second RPO. Jack Henry and Associates, 2,000 VMs with a six second RPO. And a top EU manufacturer protecting 1,200 VMs with a five second RPO. So as we look at it here, it's that proven reliability, again, only that Zerto has built into the gold standard solution. So number three, looking to de-risk your recovery with instant non-disruptive testing. So when we talk about non-disruptive, we're able to do this at any point in time without production impact in only a few clicks with automated reporting. But this really gives you one step post ransomware attack to do the data forensics once you've been attacked to really figure out what happened in my environment and how do I mitigate that risk in the future? Now, de-risking your recovery with instant non-disruptive testing. Dynamite, Dynamisk, one of our customers, no testing before Zerto. After Zerto, 20 minutes or lower to do non-disruptive testing. One of our healthcare clients, Care First, took them six full-time testing resources. Post Zerto, one testing resource. And HCA, a very large healthcare customer, 23 testing resources. After Zerto, six testing resources. So you can see that you can actually re reduce the number of full-time employees that it takes to actually go through and do testing of your most critical applications. Time, money, and resources. Pain point number four, installation, configuration, and management, recovery, testing, forensics. It's all about confidence. And this is a really important point to think about when we talk about Zerto in its rarest form. But don't take my word. We're trusted by over 9,500 customers across multiple and many verticals. Now you can see by this list here, there are companies across all those verticals that are utilizing Zerto to protect critical applications, critical data, and reduce risk when it comes to ransomware, when it comes to data loss, and when it comes to a myriad of other challenges that environments face today. So I want to just take the time and thank you very much. I appreciate your patience and assistance with me today. And thank you very much. I hope everyone has a better understanding on HP Zerto, how it can actually help you to recover your critical system with minutes within just a few clicks. Um, now we have Mr. Adam Carl. He's the technical sales director from Scality. He is here with us physically in HPCIC Singapore, and he will help us to say goodbye to ransomware with a continuous data protection delivered on demand. The floor is yours, Adam. Thanks, Trish. Good morning, everyone in the room. It's really nice to see people face to face again. And hello to everyone uh, on Zoom. So, yeah, my name is Adam, and I work for Scality. Um, I'm going to tell you about Scality. Some of you may never have heard of Scality, um, but what we do is basically make sure your data is safe for the long term. Right. So 
I'll just give a quick rundown of who we are. So ScaleT is a software company. We make software defined storage, right? And we're trying to give customers the flexibility uh, of, of, uh, of cloud. So all the features of cloud, um, but with the security of an on-premise deployment. So our solution is deployed in your data center. And we provide both file and object access to your data. So we're supporting legacy workloads and your modern or future thinking applications as well. Um, it really is suited for you know, your, your, your workloads that you think are going to grow, especially rapidly over the years. Uh, and you want a product, a storage product that is going to easily evolve and grow with you and your use cases. At ScaleT, we believe in making a highly durable, highly available storage solution that can spread across multiple sites to provide multiple availability zones. Uh, and the software really allows you to have an easy to manage solution. It's self-healing. Uh, you can reduce the amount of uh, storage admins that you need uh, to, to just uh, 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 one person. And we work very closely with GreenLake as well, HP, to provide not only the cloud features on premise, but you also get the cloud economics as well. And we've been partnering with HP for a long time. Ever since 2014, we've been strategic partners. We've been named uh, strategic, strategic partner for general purpose object store um, with HP. And uh, HP actually invested in us back in 2016. So we have a very close relationship with HP. Um, we've been named storage momentum partner of the year last year, which is fantastic. And we even jointly launched a product together last year with uh, um, our product called Artesco, which I'll talk about in a minute. And we have reference architectures on, on the Apollo and ProLiant series servers. And uh, yeah, all of our products and, and, and part numbers are, are just on the HP price list. So it's very easy to, to um, you know, quote and size the solution. Okay, so yeah, over 260 customers, lots of raw petabytes deployed around the world. So really good partnership. And the GreenLake element makes, as I said, it makes it really easy to have the cloud-like economics as well uh, as the cloud-like features. So um, uh, this is a, a, um, a tried and tested solution uh, around the world at all different sizes, whether it's a small or, or a huge deployment, right? Up to We have some customers running 50 uh, or more petabytes in a single platform. It's a scalable product, uh, really suited for the, the, the HP GreenLake uh, model. Um, and yeah, uh, we, we are based, the, the measurement, the metric that the GreenLake uh, uh, uses for scality is based on the raw capacity of the, of the storage. So what we try and do, what we do do for customers, the HP and ScaleT solution, is we provide an easy to manage solution. So this is 100% software deployed on top of x86 servers. So that means you get uh, no complexity when you, want to, when, when you want to expand the solution. There's no forklift upgrades. You know, you have unlimited scalability. You can just add disks or add servers into the platform. And you don't have to worry about the, the migration because there isn't any anymore. You can just add servers into the cluster. You can use old servers with new servers side by side, mixed disk sizes all in the same platform. So it's very durable as well. We can provide up to 14 nines of data durability. So it's not the highest in the industry. So um, when you put your data into the platform, you know it's going to be safe and secure for, for years, if not decades to come thanks to our technology where we do self-healing, constantly checking the data. We also have hybrid cloud workflow tools where we can push or tier data to the public cloud. So if you wish to uh, you know, create a workflow where you have your data on premise, then after a certain amount of days, it could be pushed to, uh, to a public cloud if you wish. That's built into the product. And yeah, of course we're trying to lower the cost and public cloud. So with our with our partners at HP GreenLake, we can provide a, a really cost-effective solution, which is a lot more cost-effective than going to uh, uh, one of the public clouds. And our product at Scality, our products at Scality, are not a uh, um, a vertical centric product, it's more of a use case centric. So we have customers around the world, across all different industries, uh, whether it's uh, it's government, it's uh, finance, or media and entertainment, uh, service providers, etc.
And, you know, don't, don't just take it from me. You know, we, we, I'm, I'm saying we do all this fantastic stuff, but, you know, the, the, uh, the Gartner Magic Quadrant for Distributed File and Object, we've been uh, leaders in that since its inception uh, six years ago. Um, there's some really nice reports from IDC where they say you, you can get 366% uh, ROI against public cloud based with HPE hardware and Scality software. Um, on Scality.com and also um, places like Seismic, you can also get some really interesting use case stories right, from our references. Uh, so yeah, there's lots of information out there. But we have some very, very happy customers doing some very big, big data workloads uh, and also very unique use cases. So what we provide when we talk about Scality and HPE is an unbreakable cloud storage. Right. So what do I mean about that? It means that it has the cloud functionality being flexible, uh, you know, uh, any x86 server generation. Don't worry about migrations. You don't worry about things like management. It's a self-healing solution, multi-tenanted, right? Your own private AWS S3 storage, but on-premise. And we also do file, right? I mentioned at the beginning. So we're supporting file and S3 workloads on the same platform. This combined with things like protecting against hardware failures. So there's no single point of failure in the, in, in the system. So you, you, you protect against hardware failure, you protect against software failure. And then with features like object locking, we can protect, protect against malicious activity and ransomware, especially when you combine that with a partner like Zerto. So we can provide a, um, a secure place to put their journal archives for extra protection. So we have two products. Scality provides two products. I'd say our flagship product is the Scality Ring. The Scality Ring has been around since 2009. Uh, our first custom was deployed in 2010. And the Scality Ring is a scale-out distributed storage solution for both file and object. So it's deployed on x86 servers. So we have reference architectures uh, with the HPE Apollo range, which are very dense servers, and also um, some ProLiant models as well. And this is a minimum starting point of uh, a 200 terabytes usable usable capacity. So when we talk about, um, uh, sorry, raw capacity with GreenLake. So the minimum is 200 terabytes. There's a starting point of three servers. So you can start very small and this cluster provides uh, a, a durable solution, as I said, highly available, no single point of failure. So we are installing on Linux. Uh, we can provide the OS if you wish, but you can bring your own OS if you wish. Uh, and that's where we install on top of. So there's no hardware compatibility list or anything like this, which is how we can provide the latest servers from HPE. Like, you know, you can use Gen 10 today, Gen 11 next year or whatever, whenever, whenever it comes out, no problem. And the latest drive sizes. So you'll see a lot of hardware appliances that restrict you from using certain disk sizes until, you know, maybe a year down the line. You can use today whatever the server can use. So if HP brings you know, 20 terabyte disks to the table, no problem, we can start using it, right? On the flip side, the, we have another product which we jointly launched with HPE last year called Artesca. Artesca is a lightweight cloud native object store, right? So this is deployed using Kubernetes. It can be deployed on a single server or it can be deployed on a virtual machine even if you wish. Really ideal for uh, application, single application workloads or edge locations. So this is giving you an S3 storage, S3 only, whereas Ring is file system as well. And it's a minimum starting point of 50 terabytes. As I said, one node, very, very easy to deploy on a, on a simple uh, uh, ProLiant server, if you wish. And it gives you a similar durable solution. So both products are very durable, no single point of failure in the hardware layer. You can sustain disk failures, server failures, et cetera. We include the OS in this to make a really easy to deploy uh, software appliance. Uh, and uh, it's really aimed at the IT generalist. So you don't need to be a storage admin to manage this. It's very easy to use, uh, self-managing, et cetera. In both these products, we have a very important feature or features to protect against the ransomware, right? So we have S3 object lock, which is an API which AWS introduced, uh, and we implement you know, the same AWS API on premise. So we introduce as well the S3 object lock for both our products. 
Uh, we also do a similar thing on the file system side as well. But what this means is that any data that you put into an object lock bucket, it can't be edited or deleted, okay? So um, you put the data in and even if a, a malicious attacker or, or script or something gets into your system, it cannot, it doesn't have the rights to modify the data. Nobody has, nobody, even, you know, even the admin uh, has no uh, access to, to modify or delete the data. And the use cases where this kind of storage is, is um, uh, applicable, you know, you can see on here, like backup, archive, uh, content and collaboration, big data, data lakes, cloud native applications, also at the far end of the spectrum, very specific industry, medical and, and media and entertainment. So lots of different use cases there, which I'm not going to go through them all. Okay. Um, so yeah, so Ring, let me just recap on Ring. So as I said, Ring is a scalable storage solution for the file and object. Okay, it works on any x86 server with uh, a lot of validated solution uh, 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 application partners. So we have over 130 uh, solution partners uh, to, to deploy with. Um, file and object, distributed so no single point of failure you can grow the solution just by adding disks or adding servers no data migrations okay so you can run the old servers and a new server side by side apollo servers proliant servers you can mix and match workloads what we're trying to do is consolidate all of the different storage silos you have around your businesses and put them in a single platform where you can have multi-tenancy so you can provision storage for different use cases, different departments, different customers if you're a service provider, and just have that single platform to manage, which is easy to manage and self-healing. It's highly durable. We use a combination of erasure coding and replication and geographic distribution of data with self-healing features to provide this protection. Um, yeah, and the uh, we provide both asynchronous and synchronous replication between sites. And then Artesca, just to refresh you on the flip side, Artesca is our lightweight product, which is be deployed on a, on a single, single server. It gives you a comprehensive multi-tenanted S3 storage, just like its, it's uh, cousin does, Ring, um, but this is S3 only. You can also, on both products, but one of the highlighted features of Artesca is the ability to tier data to the public clouds, if you wish. Um, you can also deploy on virtual machines if you don't want to do bare metal. Uh, and we have the supported servers, similar Apollo, DL range of servers, the very dense servers where you can get a lot, a lot of disks inside. And high durability, thanks to actually dual level erasure coding, both locally and across the network to provide very high durability and availability of the data. Um, and yeah, it's really ideal for uh, application, individual applications, maybe at the edge or remote offices, you know, an edge location could be a, a factory, an office, a cruise ship, a military base, where you need some S3 storage. And now we'll just look at the data backup and archive use case, right? So the pains and challenges that, that, you, that, that uh, backup administrators might have, right? So ransomware attacks, we've heard a lot about it already from our previous presenters. So they're always happening, right? So um, I think it's every 11 seconds it happens. And um, I think it was a Singapore security uh, council said that the amount of attacks had increased by like a uh, hundred percent in the past year or so. So it's happening a lot. And um, also too many silos, right? The non-scalable. So these backup applications or appliances have their own storage and they have a headache managing all these different uh, storages. And then tape, tape management. If anyone's been an operator before, we all know that tape management is a nightmare. Uh, I, I remember personally anyway. Um, so customers are wanting to move away from tape to have an online storage of their backups so they can easily quickly access it, especially if they're trying to monetize the data. They want quick access to it. Um, yeah, large growth in digital business. We all know that uh, we're in a digital transformation at the moment, for all industry. And yeah, wanting to have a easy, uh, predictable, affordable levels of, uh, of, of cost. So yeah, that's where we come in. So with a scality product, whether that's our, our Tesca or Ring, we provide a cost-effective storage platform where your backup and archive applications can tier data to 
Typically S3 is used by these applications nowadays. We're seeing a big move away from file applications. And you know, we're, we're, we're able to provide very good throughput as well for these backup applications and restore times, obviously, as well. And then you can also introduce this ability to tier data as well to the public cloud if, if, if you wish to. And it's very easy to have that secondary copy as well. So you can have your on-premise cloud with GreenLake, HP, GreenLake, and ScaleT. And then if you wish to have a secondary copy, that's not a problem as well. And then we can restore from here to here or from here through to here. So the key things are we give S3 on-premise which can provide a, uh, protection against ransomware through the S3 object lock API. We can provide really fast restore times. And we have a, uh, we've done some tests with a specific uh, uh, backup vendor, which we got really, really good uh, throughput. Um, and we really are protecting the data for the long term. We know that customers are making uh, a value out of that data, which is very old. So the older the data, sometimes the more valuable it is. So decades, we can protect the data for, for decades to come. Okay, and never run out of space. So as I said earlier on, this is a scalable solution. You will never run out of space thanks to its easy to grow architecture. Just add disks just add or, or, and or servers. So when we look at the Zerto com uh, combination, right? So Zerto has this, uh, this journaling feature. So, you know, it's a continuous data protection, right? So all of these uh, journals, which are five second journals, uh, they go into your primary storage, right? But, you know, what if your primary storage goes down? You know, you might want to take another copy of it. So you can create a repository based on S3 with our Tesco or Ring. So you can push this long-term repository copy to the Scality Ring or our Tesco. So that means if this ever goes down, you know, you can, you can restore here. So um, we're providing that extra layer of protection. And especially with the object lock API, right, you can create an immutable repository. So immutability meaning you know you cannot edit, you can't delete the copy of data here. So you have really have that extra protection uh, not only in the Zerto layer but also in the storage layer as well. Uh, and then also you can comply with things like three, two, one, like three copies on two different media, one off site. You could put this in a different location, right? So you can really get that extra protection. So when you combine Ring. And our Tesca, so this is our future-proof architecture, right? So you have many different applications, you know, such as uh, CCTV or email or your uh, or your um, uh, logging, right? This can be your core data center, ring starting at three servers, and then you have your edge applications, right, running at the edge, and they can sync back as well to the to the scality ring. So these two products work in harmony. Or you could have our Tesca running as a separate standalone uh, edge location. And, you know, this is a scale-out architecture, just like Ring. So you could have one or three servers, for example. Or you can have your applications working. You might have an application team we just who just need S3 storage. Okay, no problem. You give them this virtual machine or a couple of virtual machines. We spin up, spin up our Tesco and they can use it straight away, S3 storage. And then we have the replication to the uh, public cloud. So I hopefully I, I hope you learned something today about what we do at Scality. I'll be around uh, uh, for the rest of the afternoon. So if you guys in the audience want to speak to me, I'll be around. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much to Adam for sharing with us on how Scality solutions can protect our data and prevent um, ransomware from attacking the data and we can eventually recover it. Next, we have um, Ghana, who is our HP solutions architect. He will take us through a technical demo to show us how easy Zerto and Scality will work together to bring about this data immutability. Ghana, please. Thank you, Trish. Hi, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about a technical demo of joint solutions of HP, GreenLake, Zeto, and Skeleti. Okay. So let me present the slide. So here is the demo complete overview. We have a two environments, production and replica. And replica, we call it as a, either a site B, secondary site, or disaster recovery site. And we have the virtual environment. We are using a multiple hypervisor ESXi host. So on the both sides, production and replica side. 
And to manage this hypervisor host, we need a management tool. We are using a vCenter server for ESXi host. In the lab demo, I am showing you using the vCenter server. And even our solution is supported for Hyper-V hypervisor as well. If you are using a Microsoft Hyper-V hypervisor, we can use the management tool, System Center Virtual Machine Manager. And once we have the management tool, it will allow you to configure your multiple production workloads. We have created a multiple production workload and all these workloads stored on a primary storage. And this storage, we can use either HP 3 par, Nimble, any of these storages. And hypervisor host, we can use the HP Prolian 380 models, or we can use the Synergy models. And on top of that, if you want to configure your Zeto, the primary piece, it's a software only. We have to need a one management tool, the tool name called Zeto Virtual Manager. This has to be installed on a production environment and replica environment. Once we install here, as David mentioned in our previous, there is no agent for our guest VMs. We just need only the Jetto virtual appliance must be installed on all of our hypervisors. And similarly, we can deploy on other hosts. Either we can provision on individual ESX host or we can provision for a cluster. And similarly, we can also provision a Jetto virtual replication appliances on our secondary site. So this is the actual primary setup, how we are providing the data protection. And suppose this data protection for the both sides, we have to be paired. So once the pairing between the both sides, we can able to provide the continuous data replication and protection between these two sites. And let's say our data we are taking the normally, if you want to provide the secure your data for daily, weekly, monthly, and annually for long-term retention purpose, we need another solution. That means we have to provide a target repository. In order to configure your target repository for the both sites, production site and replication sites, we require a target repository. So as earlier session, our Mr. Adam mentioned that to provide a target repository, we should start with a, suppose the customer's minimum size is 50 terabyte, we can start with a Skeletty Atesca solution. Suppose some of the customers, they are using a more than 200 TB of data. So those application workloads, we can go for a, another solution that is a Skeletty Ring. So it's subjected to be customer's requirement. Either we can use a ring or Skeletty at test uh, depends on the requirement. So this joint solution using HP GreenLake, Zeto, and Skeletty, we can able to provide the data protection in entire environment. Nowadays, most of the workloads are running on on-premises, private cloud, public cloud, hybrid, and also it's all, although moving to the serverless architecture. In all the layers, this solution is more accurate to provide the security against ransomware, okay? So the main key point here is to provide our stateless data, mainly to no scheduling. Normally in a traditional backup, we have a scheduling, but here no need to provide any scheduling. It's always journal-based backup only. And we are also providing long-term long repository and this scalability solution is providing a secondary storage and completely it's a object-based. Now I quickly log into the demo environment. So here is the Jetto console. Let me close. Okay. So here is the Jetto console. When we log into the dashboard, we can see the complete how many virtual protection group we have. If you want to replicate the data from our on-premises to DR site, what we can do is we have to create a virtual protection group. So we already have a virtual protection group. As I mentioned, this protection group, we can create either it is on local or we can create on a disaster recovery site. Suppose if you see here, our peer side, few are the DR side, few are running on a production site. So it's subjected to be our choice. And for our, now, if you want to provide a ransomware protection for testing purpose, I'm connecting to a one of the server. So this is an application server. I'm using a one of the ransomware simulator. On the desktop, we have a multiple files. And this is a ransomware software. It's a Shino locker. Normally, in general, what will happen is whenever the ransomware is affected, immediately, whatever the data, end users using the data, all the data will be encrypted. And it will pop up to providing a, any of the decryption key. If you want to get the decryption key, we have two methods. Either we can pay the ransom to the customer, ransom to the hacker, sorry, or the second method is 
how effectively we can recover our data. This is the two methods. So we are going with a second method, how effectively we are recovering using Z2 and Skeletal solution. So before running this Shino Locker, uh, let's quickly create a one checkpoint on our server. Let's say, for example, I'm choosing the server is app server. This app server currently verify the status is virtual production type is local and it is running on the same production site and meeting the SLA. If you want to add the checkpoint, select this VM and we need to choose per a checkpoint. Suppose I'm adding a checkpoint here now. Let's say checkpoint. Checkpoint is before ransomware attack. Okay, so I'm just saving this checkpoint. Once we saved the checkpoint, let's quickly log into our file server. Let's imagine our server is affecting with a ransomware. Just launch the setup.exe file. What it will happen is, but users also may not know which files are they're receiving. Sometimes there may be some corrupted files also coming based on our data transfers. See, if you see in our desktop, all the files are affected with a ransomware. Even if the user knowingly or unknowingly, if they want to try to open the file also, they are unable to open the file. If they open the file, what it says is, it's saying that we need to enter the decrypted key. Decrypted key, how we can get is, we need ransom, you may get the call or email from the hackers. We need to provide the ransoms to the customer, ransoms to the hackers, sorry. That is the first method. But in general, most of the customers, they are not interested to pay the ransom to the hackers. The only method is how effectively we can recover our data from the ransomware attack. So how we can recover is just quickly close this. What Whenever we receive the notification from our end users, just close the session immediately and log into our Jeto and find the specific appliance. We can go for a restoration. So restoration methods, we have three methods in our Jeto. We can restore failover or restore method, move method. But in this current scenario, I'm using the restore using a file-based restoration. Let's select the file and choose our machine. Let's say our virtual protection name is app VM. So select the respective VM and click on next. And we have a multiple generals. Earlier in our David already mentioned, it's a general journal-based technology. In our previous traditional environment, the backups will be in a snapshot-based backup. Even when the data is corrupted, there is a time difference. But in the journal-based backup, RPO is in a seconds only. See, there may be a, so many journals. You can use any of the healthy journal and mount and restore it. That is one method. Another method is just now for testing purpose, we created a one checkpoint. Either you can use a checkpoint also. Suppose how we can identify in the actual ransomware scenario is when the customer highlighted the affected time based on the timestamp, we can find this checkpoint. Okay. So now that I'm choosing one timestamp, the, as per the timestamp, I'm mounting the disk. So while mounting the restoration also, we have two methods. We can restore it directly to the same location or you can restore it to the, any of the alternate location. So now here, before restoring also, we can quickly check whether the files are healthy state or not. Let's say the files are on desktop. So in our administrator, users administrator, on the desktop tab, we can see, if you see this file, this file extensions are not like a Chino extension. It's all in a normal healthy condition. So select the desktop and choose the restoration methods. Either you can choose to original location or you can restore it to any of the alternate download location. So it's a subject to be our requirement only. Let's say I'm just restoring to the same location. Click on start. So once we click on start, on the top of the ransomware console, you can, uh, sorry, Zeto console, we can see the restoration is in progress. When we click on here and click on show all, we will see the restoration is in progress. Within few minutes, the restoration will complete. Because we are using a continuous data replication methodology. So with this methodology, the replication is a bit faster compared to traditional restoration. So it's in progress, 44%. 83%. Yeah, it's completed now. 
So once it is completed, we can quickly log into the affected machine. Just close the all the unnecessary windows, all the affected portion you can close. On the desktop, you can see already the restoration files. Even if you're trying to open the, any of the file, all the files are able to open successfully or not. See the files are able to access normally. So documents are accessing normally and same way other files also, if you want to see the, any other file, see files are able to access it. So this is how we can restore it. And how about the corrupted data? That data can be safely removed and safely removed from the desktop portion. Either we can do shift delete or remove to the recycler bin or send it for a forensic testing. Okay. So that's how we can do the ransomware recovery. So data is safe on our desktop location. Okay. So the same portion earlier, I trying to explain from the slide. Now, there is a, another option in our Zeto console. Suppose Mr. Adam already explained about the skeletty portion. So I would like to introduce the Adam to explain some more key benefits in the skeletty portion. Yeah, so um, what we have, this is the Artesca browser. Um, so on, on here, the web GUI, there is a data browser and it's really easy to set up a, a object lock bucket. So once I create the bucket, then my friend here will be able to show the how to create a repository, right? An immutable repository. So um, I, I go in my tenant. So my tenant is is all the way down at the bottom here. So it's a multi-tenanted solution, right? So you can have multi-tenants, um, multiple namespaces. So I've got a bucket here, which I already created, but it's really easy to create a bucket. So you create a bucket, you give it a name, and then you choose object lock, right? You just tick a box. Uh, and then you can also set retention policies. So uh, you can have um, a specific number of days that the data is locked for. And then after that, the data can be unlocked for, right? Days or, or even years. So it's that easy. And then you click save and then that's it. And then my colleague here would then be able to log into his GUI and configure the, um, uh, the uh, repository. So if you want to show that, thank you. I will show you how we can add this repository to Zeto console. So when we log into the Zeto console, there is a tab for this setup tab. When we select the setup tab, we can see how many virtual replication appliances. Earlier I mentioned, all our ESXi hosts must install with a VRA. This is the one. And the next tab is how many data stores we have. All the data stores we can find here and the repository tab. Under repository tab, we can add the target repository as based on our requirement. We can add either Skeletty Atisca or Skeletty Zeto solution. Suppose here in our demo environment, we already added the Skeletty Atisca solution. So if you want to see what is the minimum requirement to add the solution is, just click on the existing option and select edit. We will see first minimum requirement is we have to configure the Skeletty Attesta name and we require a Skeletty Attesta URL, whatever we configured on the Attesta object-based storage level as our software different storage level. That URL we have to enter here and it requires a bucket name and we also need a access key and security key. Apart from this, we also need to configure a immutability. This is the key portion. Data immutability means it's almost like a providing a life insurance policy to our data. And data immutability, as our previous speakers mentioned that, immutability means cannot be edited or deleted. And it is completely a secure data. And this data immutability options, we can choose per virtual protection group policy level, or we can mention for a days level. It's a, any of the choice we can choose, but in our current environment, I, we enabled as per VPG retention policy. So this is the key option to provide you security for our all the workloads data. Okay, I'm just clicking the cancel. So this is how we can configure the Skeletty attest. So let's quickly recap what we discussed until now. So we talk about the, the complete joint solution of HPE GreenLake, Zeto, and the Skeletty integration. 
And with interest of our time, we covered only the one main use case, how we can provide ransomware protection. And we have a plenty of use cases using the Zeto and Skeleti solutions. And the key point is data immutability. See, let's say we have a disruption happen at certain time, 12 p.m. In our normal traditional backups, there is a delay and we also need to find the what is the healthy state of our virtual environment and find the rest specific point, there may be a, some data loss in your traditional snapshot methodology. But when it comes to the continuous replic data replication methodology or continuous data protection, CDP, and providing a journaling technology, the only the difference is whenever the attack or any of the ransomware or any of the data disruption or any unknown issue happen on our server, in order to perform a restoration, we need to find a very near synchronized replication. So that will be like a, the RPO is in seconds and RTO is in a minutes. Okay, this is the key point. And another one is key benefits of Zeto and Skeleti. Okay, let's hand over to the Trish. She will finally... Okay, uh, thank you, Ghana. So now uh, you may wonder where does HP GreenLake come in? So HP Zerto and Scality is actually available on the HP GreenLake platform, which includes the HP hardware, software, as well as services. So all these are available as part of a single contract and it actually brings a cloud to you. So I will have a two minutes video um, that kind of articulate what it means by HP GreenLake, the clouds that bring to you. Let's watch the two minutes video and see how it brings you in action. Hi, Sachi, this is Cam, our new developer. Welcome, Cam. So I want to take all stress out of the user experience. Not a problem. Let's streamline the app. The users can purchase in one easy step. Can you get it done while I'm gone? Not a problem. So we're using the public cloud? Kinda, but with a twist. Twist? We've got HP GreenLake. It's a hybrid cloud that can be anywhere we need it to be. It's like a cloud that comes to us. HP GreenLake, working at the edge. And, and in our data center, open and secure. That's better. Okay, team rally. So, can we add Cam to the platform? On it. Hey Seth, CFO asked for IT costs for the app test environment. Question mark? Nice, and we only pay for what we use? Great. How you doing? Surprisingly well. Okay. Seth, I spun up your Kubernetes cluster. Yes, you did. Wait. Do we have enough capacity? Yes, we're in great shape. Take a look. Whoa. And it lives right here. We can scale up and down as needed. So the team could focus on the more important things. Mm -hmm. But if we need more. Not a problem. We always have a buffer of capacity on hand. And because it's in our own environment, we, we get, get more, more control, control of our data. data. At this pace, we should be done by Sachi's back. Ivy, are we ready? We just deployed. Nice work, team. We did. Not a problem. Okay, that's the end of our video. So HP GreenLake platform actually brings the clouds to you. So it actually shows that it actually resides in your data center. It has a usage and the billing information similar to any cloud. And importantly, you can actually design the cloud and decide what kind of um, hardware and what kind of software um, actually supports your entire environment. So now, if you liked what you have just heard earlier, um, you can actually try out um, Zerto for free. We will send you the link online. 
And we also have the HP GreenLake test drive. So you can actually create an account, log in and really experience how the HP GreenLake uh, platform, the whole entire GUI user experience will be like. We have come to the end of today's sessions. Thank you for coming. Wish everybody good health and stay safe. Bye.